To this day, there is no evidence that suggests that lifting with a rounded back leads to an increase of injuries. As it stands, we do not have evidence to determine good versus bad or injurious versus non-injurious ways of lifting or moving. Okay, so we've been hearing that a lot lately, and although it's true in a way, it's also very misleading. The actual reason why there are no studies proving that you can directly hurt yourself when lifting with round back is not because you can't hurt yourself, but because it's hard to have a study design that can actually prove that correlation. However, there is proof that rounding your back when lifting heavy weights increases the risk of injury, and this proof is based on plain logic, biomechanics, and scientific evidence. To explain this, I need to first start with plain logic and this stick. This stick, just like any other object, has its strongest and weakest points. It can take up much force on the vertical axis, but not so much on the horizontal. The same rule applies to our bones and ligaments. And of course, the joints, which are mechanical structures composed by bones and ligaments, have also their strongest and weakest points. For example, the knee can take up much force in the vertical direction, but not so much in the horizontal. In the same way, the most powerful position of the spine is the neutral position. This position is characterized by lumbar lordosis, thoracic kyphosis, and cervical lordosis. One of the reasons why this position is considered optimal is because it ensures even distribution of pressure on the intervertebral discs. And why is that important? That's because the intervertebral discs consist of a soft center with a gel-like substance, the nucleus, and the tougher exterior, the annulus. One of the most common back injuries, disc herniation, occurs when a portion of the nucleus pushes through a crack in the annulus. Increasing asymmetrically the intradiscal pressure with relatively heavy loads is rightfully considered a contributing factor for this and other lower back injuries. So when the spine is loaded in a neutral position, the intervertebral discs take up a symmetrical pressure, like these water balloons, for example. However, the more you round your back, the more pressure is moved to the posterior part of the discs. This is simple biomechanics and we don't really need science to confirm that. It's plain logic. However, if you follow this channel, you probably do it because I'm doing my best to provide science-based information. So here are some of the many studies that have found significant increases in intradiscal pressure during spine flexion. I'll link them in the description so you can check them out. For now, keep in mind that it's a well-known fact that spine flexion increases intradiscal pressure. But does this mean that you should never train with round back? No. You should be training every movement of your body, and I'm all for that. The increased intradiscal pressure during spine flexion means only one thing, and that is that the more you increase the load and get closer to your limits, the more you want to be closer to the neutral position of the spine. So your exercise selection should follow an inverse relationship between spine flexion and load, where you can exercise any type of movement with low loads, but as the weight increases, train closer to the neutral position. This way, exercises like the Jefferson curls and the side bend should be executed with relatively lower weights. On the other side, increased loads and volume in exercises like the deadlift should be executed with a technique as close to neutral back as possible. So the intensity of the exercise is the predominant factor that determines if round back lifting could be harmful or not. This way, lifting the maximum weight you can lift with the most vulnerable position of your spine is not smart. And this will definitely 100% increase the risk of injury. And I can already see coming to my way comments like, I've been training for 20 years with a rounded back and I've never had an injury. But this doesn't really prove anything. The fact that something increases the risk of injury doesn't mean that you will definitely get injured because this depends on many factors. Some people might get hurt, while others with genetically stronger spines might be lifting with a round back their entire life and have zero issues. And this is the same with many other things in life, like smoking for example. Smoking can kill people, and in a study from 2015, authors reported that 67% of smokers died from a smoking-related illness. But just imagine the other 33% saying that they've been smoking their entire life and didn't die from smoking. This doesn't really prove much. 
Now, in my opinion, this whole debate is wrong because the real question is not whether you could get hurt or not with a round back. Everything that we do in a training session needs to have a purpose. So the actual question is what is the purpose of rounding your back during deadlifting? If you are to increase the pressure on your spine and risk a potential injury, what balances the scale on the other side? In other words, what is the only advantage of round back vs neutral back? Sadly, the only reason here would be to lift more weight. Simply by curving your back, you elevate the position of your body, which creates advantageous mechanics in the hips and knees. The more you round your back, the more you increase these angles, something similar to what happens when you're lifting from blocks. And this is pretty much the only reason to lift with a round back. However, in evidence-based coaching, we always choose the minimum stress that is needed on an exercise to get the outcome we want. So, to my understanding, on the one side of the scale goes an increased risk of injury, and on the other, lifting a couple more weights. You can decide for yourself if this is something you want or not, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. However, I should also make a note that not all types of round back deadlifting are equal. A small thoracic curve is far less detrimental than a lumbar curve. That's because the neutral position of the thoracic spine is actually slightly bent. So, a small increase in that curve shouldn't be much of a problem. However, a larger increase will definitely cause increased pressure in that area. On the other side, the lumbar spine is in an inverse curve during neutral position. This way, going all the way to the opposite side during heavy lifting is the most potentially harmful position of all. Overall, in terms of the risk of injury during round back deadlifting, two factors are important the degree of the curve and the relative intensity of the load. With low loads, you can and should be training in pretty much any position. With heavier loads, slight curves might not be detrimental, but the risk of injury definitely increases as the degree of flexion increases too. However, even lifting with a neutral back can create loopholes in your lower back strength if you don't know how to symmetrically train this region. To learn the two best exercises for lower back strength that you should always combine with deadlifts, you can see this next video.